Hello and welcome to the newsroom. I am Mary Kanu. President Muhammadu Buhari has met with governors from the northern part of Nigeria as the country seeks ways to contain its numerous security challenges. The governors were led to the meeting by the Plateau State Governor and the Chairman of the Northern Governors Forum, Simon Lalong, and were also joined by the Chief of Staff to the President, Ibrahim Gambari, during the meeting held at the Presidential Villa, Abuja. According to the governors, the meeting was convened to review the region's security situation and seek ways to address it. The Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, has threatened to embark on a nationwide strike over what it describes as, as unlawful dismissal of civil servants by the Kaduna State Governor Nati El Rufai. NLC President Ayuba Waba disclosed this at a news conference in Abuja after a meeting of the Central Working Committee. He said all members of the NLC will down tools nationwide for five days in the first instance and when nothing is done by relevant government agencies, the workers' union will think of the next line of action to take. Waba explained that the union's plan for a nationwide strike over El Rufai's action is predicated on the assumption that the governor is having support from other states and the federal government. Despite the partial reopening of operations by the Lagos chapter of the Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria, Jishin, the Lagos State High Court Ikeja has remained closed with members of the Lagos Jishin monitoring compliance. Chairman of Jishin in Lagos, Shobawali Kenge, has said work and official duties are constrained to Wednesday, Thursday and Friday of every week, while Monday and Tuesdays of every week remain strike days and all staff members must stay off duty to observe the national strike. The national body of Jishin declared a nationwide strike on April 6 over the refusal of state governors to implement the financial autonomy for the judiciary as the third arm of government. And India has reported a record number of coronavirus cases and deaths for the second straight day amid an alarming shortage of medical oxygen and beds in its hospitals as the brutal second wave of the virus overwhelmed its underfunded fragile healthcare system. On Friday, the world's second most populous nation reported a single day high of nearly 332,730 new cases and 2,263 deaths. Hospitals across northern and western India, including the capital New Delhi, say they are fully occupied and running out of oxygen supplies. The federal government has announced plans to deploy undercover security operatives in a bid to check touting extortion and other sharp practices by passport officials across the country and at Nigerian missions abroad. Minister of Interior Rao Farag Beshala, who made the disclosure, says it is part of measures to make the passport application process easier, seamless and transparent. The minister also said an ombudsman would be created for members of the public to receive complaints and reports on officers trying to deviate from prescribed guidelines and subvert the process. Over 100 Palestinians and 20 Israeli police were wounded in overnight clashes in East Jerusalem. Violence broke out outside one of the entrances to the walled old city where far-right Jews had completed a match during which participants harassed Palestinians and chanted death to Arabs. There have been nightly disturbances in the area since the start of Ramadan on April 13, with Palestinians complaining that police were blocking access to the promenade around the walls, a popular gathering place for Palestinians after the end of the daytime Ramadan fast. Victor Osimhen scored his sixth rear hour goal of the season in Napoli's 5-2 win against Lazio on Thursday night. After he failed to find the back of the net in the Blues 1-1 draw with Inter Milan on Sunday, the Super Eagles forward came off the bench to seal his team's big victory at the Diego Maradona Stadium. The 22-year-old has now scored six goals after 18 appearances in his debut Serie A campaign. Well, that's the latest on the newsroom at this time. Do join us at the top of the hour for more updates. I'm Mary Kanu. Bye for now. Thank you.